All right, YouTube, we caught up with Mooch. How's it going today? All right, bro. So uh, you're the uh, you're the local dealer then? Yeah. Okay, and what do you deal? Heroin and crack. And how, how does that work? You uh, you get it on consignment or you, you just buy it outright? I get it on consignment. I pay them their money and I take mine. Okay. Um, how's the markup on, on uh, like, fentanyl is it a decent decent markup or you can't you're not getting a, a average job selling fentanyl you're gonna make more than any average job you're gonna make more than a lawyer a doctor a chemist you're gonna make more put it in perspective what, what do you... in perspective what's the average guy making that's that's selling all day long at least two thousand dollars. Two thousand at the least, but you gotta pay people that's giving it to you and all that. But at the least, if it's heroin, two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars a day, and guys aren't usually just selling one; they're selling uh, coke as well, yeah. crack, crack, yeah. right? All of it. Wow! So they can make some bank then, huh? Oh yeah. A couple grand, at least what three, four grand a day? Yeah. Wow. Um, People that run it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you deal directly. You do the hand to hand. You don't go yes. through uh, someone else. Yes, I deal head to hand. So, how do you keep from? I mean, how do you know who you're selling to is is safe? Because I know the area and I know the people. If I don't know your face. I'm not going to give you anything. Okay. So. That's for my safety. Right. I know I'm doing wrong, but it's for my safety. If I don't know your face, I'm not going to give you anything. I see. Um, and you currently have an addiction as well? Yes. And what's your addiction? Alcohol. Anything else? Marijuana. Okay. Any pills? In the past, but I've learned. Yeah, you cleaned up the yeah, pill? <laughs> that, that is no joke. <laughs> we were talking last time, and you yeah, were... Yeah, that pill thing is no <laughs> You were joke. at, what, 60 mil? Yeah. A uh, perk? That's easy. Easy? Yeah. Wow. I still might do that. Really? Yeah, in a day. 60, 60 mil a day? Yeah, but I was doing two to 300 milligrams at one time. No. Yes, sir. 300 30 milligrams of oxycodone. Yeah. That's $30 great. a pill. $30 a pill. Now it's $45 a pill. The prices change. Just like any, any business. Inflation, huh? Yeah, just like any business. If it's good, the price is going to change, the price goes up. Hmm. But, can I say something where you can? Absolutely, you can say anything you want. I'm not your average drug dealer. I care about people. That's why I'm kind of successful at it. I don't treat people like they're dirt just because they do drugs. They're still people to me. They're my people. I'm wrong for giving them the stuff, but I have to make a living. Talking to you, camera. Probably next week I'll be at work. But right now I gotta do what I gotta do. What, I have what? kids, I have grandchildren, I have people to support that look up to me. So as a man, I do what I have to do. It may be wrong sometimes, but as a man, to support my family, I'm gonna do it by all means necessary. It's not even about me. So what does work look like for next week? It's, it's, it's definite, but it can't compare it to this money. Well, right, without doubt, unless you're gonna be a chemist next week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It can't compare to this money, but camera, I'm 47 years old, tired, tired. You have kids? I have grandkids. Grandkids? Are you? Tired. How about your kids? Are they local? Absolutely. Are they clean? Absolutely. Excellent. And grandkids, they're all clean, right? No I have it no other way. I die first. Okay. Well, you, you know how the how it all works, so you yeah. can set them straight right from yeah. the get go. That's right? I have a son. He's 16. I'm on his every move. Because I was 16, I was doing crazy stuff. He's 16. 
He's on a football team. He plays chess. I'm proud of my son because he's a better version of me. When I was 16, I was out here. He's sheltered. He can't even really come outside. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So what exactly brought you into this, this lifestyle? Because it's got to be a hard lifestyle. Uh, Always looking over your back and... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with me personally, it came from uh, me being a kid. They buy me these expensive sneakers. As I got older, the sneakers got more expensive. My feet got bigger. I see these guys riding by these nice cars. I said, I could do that. And I took the wrong route. I went, I had military, they came to me for the military. I sat in the room and read the test and got everyone wrong on purpose. Everyone wrong. So they, when he looked at it, they're like, yo, you did this on purpose. I said, yeah, because I don't want to go. Wow. I should have went. You'd be a different person mm. without doubt. I, would, I wouldn't be here probably. No, definitely. You definitely wouldn't be here, but I think even in your mind, you'd be yeah. a totally different I know, person. I know. I know for a fact. Sure. Well, we all make wrong decisions, you know what I mean? And we all, hindsight's always twenty twenty. You always look yeah. back and be like, oh, I should have done this or should have done that. But, uh, I mean, you're where you're at and, you know, life's dealt you this card and... Just and, gotta deal with it. And that's how you All I'm gonna do is try to make it better. Right. Out of my heart. I might do wrong stuff, but my heart is genuine. So what's it look like if you start this this regular job next week? Okay. What's it look like beyond that? I, I mean, are you... If you're going to go on the straight and narrow, are you... I mean, is this a job where you're going to have to clean up your act and, and be clean, or... Are That's you, what I'm... I'm, just, I'm trying to use this... It's a warehouse job as a stepping stone. Right. I've worked for 20 years. And I got laid off. It was a mass layoff. A mass. Everybody's gone. I got the unemployment and the retro pay for the years I was there. But that ran out. So this is what I knew to do next. When I left that job, I was making $27 an hour. So that's a certain lifestyle you live up to. So the only thing I knew to do when I lost that was that. That's the only thing I can match it, that. It, no, it's other stuff that can match it, but that's all I knew. So the, the question that always comes to mind with me with dealers is why are they in the long game? Like why wouldn't they just try to buy and sell and buy and sell and just stockpile everything they possibly could, do it for a year or two, and then out? Not gonna last for a year. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, what will you use? You think I'll stand out here for a year? They gonna grab me? <laughs> yeah. Police eventually gonna grab me. So how long do you do it? You do it for a couple months and then cool down. A couple yeah, months. Like cool I down? said, I'm about to go to the job next week. Because <laughs> okay. I know they cover for me. Yeah. I know. You have anything they watch outstanding? A lot. Huh? You have anything outstanding right now? Oh, no, no warrants, no nothing. Oh, okay. I'm clean. Okay, great. All right, and you have your IDs and stuff like that? No, I haven't. These people are giving me a hard job with no ID. Okay. That's why I'm like, damn. That's, I'm like, I have to take, this is this is coming from God. Well, you, you get a job with no ID? <laughs> it's unheard of. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Like we could come in there with no ID. Wow. It's a legit warehouse job. And it's legit, they're gonna yeah. pay you a paycheck. Yeah, a check. Not... Yeah, a check. They're not under the table. I don't know how you're doing anything. that without an ID, but I'm going to say, I'm going to bring y'all in without an ID. Wow. Just have something. A birth certificate or something. We both got something. That's that's generous. Very generous. So I have to I have to do that because I love my family. I love my girlfriend. My girlfriend has a drug habit that I'm trying to, I've knocked it down. Ooh, I knocked it down. You deal to her? No. Really? I will not, not, never sell her. Now. She goes out and get it on her own. But I took it from 30 bags a day to maybe five. Five from 30? And what kind of time, how long did it take you to? Maybe five months. Five months to knock it down that much? But me, it's just me on her, on her, constantly on her. Do you love me? You love me or you love the drugs? Well, see, that's the thing is the addiction's always going to yeah. take precedence. That's the problem. But what I can say about her, she say I love you. Like I said, from 30 to like 5. 
she's trying. That's great. That's all I wanted to do. She'll always have it. So how long before you have her from five to zero? That's up to her. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the toughest to part yeah, right yeah. there. That's up to her. All right. Well, we'll, we'll chat with her next. And uh, I love see, her though. That's great. It's great that you guys can support each other. That's yeah. that's pretty awesome. I'll do anything for her. Um, I think that's the only questions I have. Anything else you want to add? Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Cause you're helping people more than you know. I'm talking to you, not the camera. Right. Awesome. Uh, one, one final question is, what do you hope to find in your stocking this year? Your Christmas <laughs> stocking. I don't want nothing. No? I just want everybody around to be happy. If everybody around me is happy, it's a perfect gift for me. Oh, you're just a teddy bear, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> you have a perfect gift for me. Awesome. I don't want nothing from no body. Awesome. I'm the provider. Right. I do it. I don't want nothing from nobody. My kids, nothing. That's great. All right, well, thanks for the conversation. Oh, that was hard. <laughs>